everybody! Today we're going to be drawing robots. So all you need is a pencil, a piece of paper, maybe a sharpie marker. If you don't have a sharpie marker you could use really any other kind of marker or any other drawing coloring tool. And this really cool handout I have with different ideas for drawing robots. So let's get started. The first thing that you want to do is to draw the head. In order to do that, we want to pick a really basic shape. So if you look at the top of this picture, we have lots of different ideas, but you don't have to use one of those. You could use anything you really want, but you want it to be a big shape. You want it to be big enough so that you can add details later, like the whole face. So if I'm looking at this paper, I think I really like this shape. So I'm going to make it up kind of at the top of my paper, and I want to make my robot big enough to fill my whole paper. So I'm going to start with my pencil. And I'm just going to draw lightly. I'm going to draw a little bit darker so that you can see it on the camera. I know sometimes it's hard to see. So mine might be a little darker. You might want to draw it a little lighter in case you make a mistake. So I'm going to draw my head nice and big. Nice and big enough so that later I can add details. Perfect. Next step, we want to add some shapes to the head. So these could be almost like ears. Maybe there's an antenna on the top. Maybe it's got kind of like, it almost looks like little party hats. Maybe there's a little wire, whatever you really want. There aren't really many rules to drawing a robot. I kind of like these on the side, so I might add something like that. Maybe I want them to be a little rounder. Maybe I'll make something like that. So maybe half of a circle. And maybe another half circle. And maybe I'll add a little triangle. Maybe I'm combining some of those ideas, but I want it to be the same on the other side. So I'm gonna try my best. It's okay if it's not perfect. Taking my time, just like that. I think I kind of like these wires on the top. Maybe I'll do something like that. Hmm, maybe I will just add some little triangles. and add a curly Q wire on top. Perfect. Now we need to add the face. Now when I add my face, I want it to have a little bit of personality. I don't want it to be some normal, regular robot. I want it to be a fun robot. So if we look at some of these ideas, some of these are really expressive. Like this one looks really happy. This one looks happy, but it's a little more shy. Maybe this one's a little angry. This one looks a little annoyed. So maybe you want to pick out an emotion first and then go from there. I think I like, I like this robot that looks kind of bored. But I don't want my robot to be boring. Maybe I want it to be excited. Maybe it's excited about something. So I think I want... I like these eyes. Maybe we'll do something like that. So it starts with a circle. And then it looks like maybe they turned it into a, a crescent, like a moon. I'll just add that little line there. And then it almost looks like they made another little crescent here. Easy peasy. Now I'm going to do the other eye. All right, my eyes are done. So now I need a nose. I see a lot of noses that are like rectangles with some designs on the inside. Maybe there's some triangles. A lot of them don't actually have noses. So I guess a nose is optional if you'd like one. I think I want one. I think mine will have a little square nose. And maybe Maybe I'll leave it that way. I don't think I'm going to add anything else to the nose. The nose will be plain. Next, we need the mouth. So we have lots of different mouths. We have, ooh, I kind of like this one where it's straight and it goes zigzag, 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 straight. Or maybe it's a rectangle with some lines. It almost looks like teeth. Maybe it has like a normal little mouth that you would normally draw on a person. It's up to you. 
I think I'm going to go with this one since I like that one so much. So it starts with a rectangle. And then it goes straight and then it zigzags. Almost looks like sound waves. It looks like it's talking. All right, now it looks like we are done with the face. Now we have to make the body. So the first thing we have to do is the neck to connect the head to the body. So if we look here, it's just a little rectangle. Up to you, it could be really skinny, it could be really wide, it could have a design inside. Totally up to you. I think I'm gonna make mine a little wider since he has a really wide head. All right, now for the body, looks like a lot of them are rectangles, but if you look all the way down here, some of them are a little bit different. This one's really, really tiny. This one is kind of like my head shape, but upside down. Maybe I'll make something like that. Maybe it'll come out wider at the top and then get skinnier as it goes down. But make sure you leave enough room for the legs. Again, we want it to be big enough to add details later. All right. Now we need the arms. There's lots of different styles of arms. I kind of like these round ones. Hmm. I kind of like that position too. I might just copy that and that's fine too. That's why I gave this to you. And like I said, you do not have to use anything that's on this sheet either. If you have a different idea that you think is way better, you go for it. There are very few rules with robots. The only rule, it has to look like a robot. And I like his little claw hands here. I might make mine a little different though. Now for my claw, I kind of just made a bubble letter C. So if you know how to make bubble letters, that's an easy trick. Perfect. And now I'm going to add these lines that kind of looks like vacuum tubes. If you've ever used a vacuum and there's that handy dandy tube to get in really tight places. That's what it looks like to me. Or like the vacuum at the car wash. If you've ever vacuumed out a car, there's a vacuum there sometimes and it's with a big long tube like this. All right, now I need feet. I kind of like these feet, the little triangles. But I kind of like le these legs with the knees, so maybe I'll combine them. Now that foot looks too small. But mistakes are okay. We can fix them. Actually, I think I have a better idea. We'll make it look like the foot is on the side. Like that. Look at that. I just used the paper for inspiration and then changed it to make it my own. You can do that too. All right, now I need those lines on my legs. Perfect. 
So then if you look at the bottom, they've added a lot more details to the body of their robot. So now it's time for that. I really like this dial here. I wonder what it reads. Maybe it tells me about how smart my robot is. Maybe it's about if my robot needs oil, if it needs an oil change. Let's give it a dial here. Maybe it's how hot the robot is. Maybe it's getting a fever. Oh, that robot has a bow tie. Do I want my robot to have a bow tie? I like all these buttons. Maybe we'll give him some buttons. The buttons kind of remind me of Buzz Lightyear. He's got all those buttons that make him talk. Maybe my robot has buttons that make it talk. I wonder what my robot would say. Hmm. Oh, I kind of like that robot it has like a different section for the legs and then it's got the whole body. That's interesting. I didn't notice that before. Hmm. I'll give him lots of buttons. Alright, I think my robot is done. So now I get to take my marker, and if you don't have a marker, that's okay. You can use colored pencils, crayons, other kinds of markers, anything you want. And I'm just going to outline it. After I'm done outlining, I can color it, I can add a background, anything like that. I would love for you to add as much detail to this as possible. If you're using a Sharpie marker, make sure it doesn't bleed onto the table. If you're worried about it bleeding onto the table, you could use another piece of paper and put it underneath so that if it does bleed, it goes onto the paper instead of your tabletop. But if you're using something like a Crayola marker, you shouldn't have that problem and you'll be okay. Plus Crayola is washable, so no biggie. And if you're outlining and you miss some of your pencil lines, like I just did right there, you can always erase them. Because once the marker is there, you don't need the pencil. So if you have a really big eraser, it's really good for that too. Alright, now all that's left to do is to erase all those extra pencil lines and maybe add some color. So once you're done with all this, please send me a photo on either Dojo, Google Classroom, or you can just email it to me. Uh, I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with. I'll see you later.